of mutations. They can be the difference between the perfect run and dying horribly. With every level up, you will get the choice of four mutations, five for horror, each of which will either help you or hinder your enemies. In this video, we will be going over the wide variety of mutations in Nuclear Throne. You'll find out exactly what they do and which scenarios they work best in, as well as which characters can benefit from specific ones. I should also note, there is no set list about which are the best or worst mutations. It all comes down to two things, situation and player opinion. Use this video as a guide to, for the basics of mutations, just the essentials of what you need to know about them, and then toy around to see which ones you prefer and which you don't. Our buddy Robot here will be demonstrating them. Say hi, Robot. Back Muscle. You may have noticed the ammo limit in Nuclear Throne. 255 for bullets, 55 for every other weapon. Back Muscle increases those numbers to 555 for bullets and 99 for everything else. Having a larger buffer to prevent running out of ammo can be really, really helpful in situations. Given that they both tend to use ammo more than most, Steroids and YV will probably benefit more from Back Muscle than other characters. Bloodlust. With each kill, there is a small chance that you will regain one health point. The actual percentage is only 7.69%, but remember, you're going to be killing a ton of enemies in each level, so chances are good that you'll be regaining at least a few points of HP in every single stage. All characters can benefit from this, but given that Rebel sacrifices HP to get new allies, she could benefit even more from it. That said, given his much lower health, Melting probably doesn't need this one as much. Boiling Veins each of the six weapon types in the game, bullets, shells, bolts, energy, explosives, and melee, has a specific mutation associated with it. Boiling Veins is the explosive mutation, and it prevents explosions and fire from dropping you below 4 HP. All explosions in the game, including those from your own weapon, can damage you, but with Boiling Veins, no matter what happens, you will always be left with 4 HP after an explosion. If you like running explosive weapons, it's a good idea to have boiling veins on your side. Bolt Marrow. This is the bolt-specific mutation. It gives your bolts a strong homing ability, allowing them to seek out and kill targets even if you're not aiming directly at them. And in many cases, it will allow you to kill multiple enemies in a single shot. Weapons that already have homing, the Seeker Pistol and Seeker Shotgun, will move at much tighter angles. Bolt Marrow turns bolt weapons into some of the most deadly in the game, as it means almost all of your shots will find their mark. Eagle Eyes. This greatly increases your accuracy by reducing your bullet spread. Most weapons have a natural slight inaccuracy built in, but Eagle Eyes will strongly reduce that spread, and weapons with a natural fixed spread, like the shotgun, will be clumped closer together in the direction that you aimed the shot. Since Steroids starts the game with lower accuracy, Eagle Eyes helps him catch up with the rest of the cast. Euphoria. All enemy bullets travel 20% slower. At times, bullets can fill the screen, so this reduction of speed is going to give you a little more opportunity to move around and get out of harm's way. Eyes benefits big from Euphoria, because his telekinesis already slows down enemy bullets. Extra Feet. This increases your walk speed, making most characters now on par with Plant, while Plant's move speed gets even quicker. However, there is another benefit, as surfaces with different physics will no longer apply to your character, allowing them to walk normal at all times. This means that the cobwebs in the crystal caves and the ice in the frozen city will not deter your character. Gamma Guts. This causes any enemy touching you to take 6 points of damage for every animation. If the enemy has below 6 HP, you will not take damage and they will die immediately. This acts as a safety net to a lot of the rush-based enemies in the game as they run directly into their own demise. With his ability to draw enemies into him, eyes may find this one extra helpful. However, keep in mind that enemies that have more than 6 HP can still do damage to you. Hammerhead. Hammerhead gives you the ability to walk through 20 wall tiles per stage. This is a good ability to have if you like playing slower, as you can use it to carve out a little area of safety for yourself to retreat to when things get heavy, or just rush through walls to get out of the way of enemy fire. Given how hairy later levels can get, it might be worth to pick this up 
just to give yourself a little chance to catch your breath. Heavy Heart. This is a special mutation. It will only appear after you have selected three other weapon-specific mutations, and it will only appear once. It increases the rate of weapon drops from an enemy by 210%. This means you're going to be finding a lot more weapons laying around, giving you a wider variety and potentially increasing the odds of finding that perfect weapon for you. And since his diet consists mainly of weapons, Robot may want to grab this one that is, if you've already met the criteria for it to become available. Impact Wrists. You may notice that when you kill an enemy, their corpse will move a bit and sometimes will hit another enemy for damage. Impact Wrists greatly increases that distance and damage. If there are a lot of enemies near each other, Impact Wrists will send them pinballing around, potentially turning a single enemy kill into multiple kills. In later levels in the game, as the number of enemies increases, Impact Wrists can really be one of the most useful mutations, as you can clear out whole packs of enemies in very short bursts. Laser Brain, the energy weapon specific mutation, this increases the duration and size of all energy attacks by 20%. This means lasers will hit multiple times, lightning weapons will last longer, plasma balls will be larger, etc, etc. It turns all energy weapons into significant damage outputters, and it is highly recommended that if you plan on running with or already have an energy weapon in your arsenal, you grab a laser brain as soon as you see it. Last Wish. Last Wish will immediately restore your life back up to full, give you 200 bullets, and 20 each of the rest of the ammo in the game. If you just barely stumbled your way into a portal low on health or critically underarmed, it might be worth it to grab Last Wish to get yourself back into the game. Of note, any lost max HP that Chicken has will be replenished by Last Wish, and Rogue will gain a full stock of portal strikes from it. Long Arms. This is the melee-focused mutation, and it increases the range of all melee swings. This gives it a major advantage. As strikes from them can travel through walls, you can use this to safely pick away at groups of enemies without putting yourself in harm's way. And since melee stops bullets, long arms gives melee weapons the range they need to pick off enemies from a distance while keeping yourself protected. Lucky Shot. Much like Bloodlust regenerates HP with kills, Lucky Shot does the same with ammo. All kills have an 11.76% chance of giving you a random ammo type, equivalent to one miniature ammo pack. It's a smart pick if you're concerned with keeping your ammo count up, especially if you're using a high ammo use weapon. And given how much ammo he uses, steroids will surely benefit from Lucky Shot, especially if paired with his throne butt. Open Mind. Each level will spawn an extra weapon crate, ammo crate, or radiation canister. One of the three at random. This can be helpful if you're worried about not getting enough random drops during the level. Be warned though, you have no control over whether you get the weapon, ammo, or red canister. If you're playing as Rogue, she'll get an extra portal canister instead of the extra rad. Patience. Don't like the three other mutations you are randomly given? Patience will act as a reroll. The next time you enter a portal, you'll be given four new randomly selected mutations instead. This can really help if you are in the market for a very specific mutation that didn't come up last time and want to get four fresh mutations to choose from. Plutonium Hunger. This will greatly increase the distance at which rads, ammo drops, and health drops are attracted to you. Oftentimes you may find yourself rushing out into battle to snag a little extra ammo or what have you, but with Plutonium Hunger, you'll be able to grab things from a distance. Use this if you don't want to run right into the middle of battle to refill your weapons or your health. Rabbit Paw. This increases the rate of ammo and health drops from enemies by 40%. This takes the edge off of worrying if you're going to run out of ammo or lose all your health, as it's more than likely you will be finding more as you mow through enemies. And with how many enemies show up later in the game, Rabbit Paw only becomes more and more useful the further you get. Recycle Gland, the bullet-specific mutation. This gives every hit bullet a 60% chance of being returned to your clip. Pay attention to the ammo counter here. More than half of the bullets that hit enemies will not count as using ammo. 
Since more powerful bullet weapons can normally chew through ammo very quickly, being able to get a good portion of it back immediately will significantly decrease the odds of suddenly finding yourself bulletless in the heat of battle. Rhino Skin. This increases your max health by 4, up to 12 for most characters, 14 for Crystal, and gives you those 4 points in current health. If you're concerned about dying in the game, it's a good idea to grab Rhino Skin when it comes up. I would recommend grabbing it if you're playing as Melting, as going from 2 to 6 health does absolute wonders for the character. Scarier Face. Enemies HP is reduced by 20%. You'll be killing a lot easier, and especially when later enemies in the game have much more HP, this one can be pretty invaluable. This even affects bosses in the game, which is very helpful in taking them down quickly. And remember, Plant's Throne Butt makes his snare kill when the enemy is at 33% health or less, so you might be looking at situations where enemies will be coming at Plant with basically less than half their health. Second Stomach Normally, HP drops give you 2 health back. With Second Stomach, that number doubles to 4 HP. It's a good mutation for keeping your health high and risk low. It also affects large health packs, which will now restore 8 HP. Robot's Active is affected by this, giving him the 4 HP back when he eats a weapon. And since she uses so much health to summon allies, Rebel can use this to get back up to full health quickly. Or she can use it to summon even more helpers. Sharp Teeth. If you take damage with Sharp Teeth, all enemies on screen will be dealt twice as much damage. If you tend to play risky and run right under the middle of battle, maybe grab Sharp Teeth so that when you get hit, everyone on screen feels it. By the way, Rebel sacrificing HP does count as damage, so grab it as Rebel and you'll be hurting enemies every time you summon an ally. Shotgun Shoulders, the shell-based mutation. If a fired shell hits a wall, it will gain a ton of speed and ricochet around for a few seconds. It also makes the shells do more damage just after bouncing. Around tight corridors or small areas full of enemies, a single well-placed shot could careen off walls enough to take out multiple enemies. And with shell weapons that have widespread or multiple firings, you'll be filling every nook and cranny of the level with shells. Stress. As your HP drops, your rate of fire will increase, up to a 76% increase when you are down to 1 HP. This means that playing with low health actually has a benefit, as you can fire off tons of shots extremely rapidly while searching to get your health back up. Since YB has a built-in rate of fire increase, Stress will make the Gun God fire even faster. And since she plays with low HP, once again, Rebel may find good use for Stress. Strong Spirit. When you take this mutation, you'll note a halo flowing above your character. If you take damage that would normally be fatal, you will be granted a few invincibility frames, the halo will disappear, and you will be left with 1 HP instead. It gives your character a second chance at life, which is always welcome in Nuclear Throne. Once the halo has been used, it can recharge. However, it cannot recharge in the same stage you lost it in, and it will only recharge once you are back up to full health. That said, its ability to keep you alive makes it one of the strongest mutations in the game. Throne Butt, character-specific mutations. Please see the character videos for more information about what everyone's Throne Butt does. That said, I will say this. In my opinion, Steroids and Plant should always grab Throne Butt when it's available. Trigger Fingers. Whenever you kill an enemy, the remaining reload time on both primary and secondary weapons will drop by 40%. This isn't permanent, it only works once per kill, but if you're killing a lot of enemies, it will apply that recharge often, allowing you to, well, kill more enemies. This is especially good for weapons you get later in the game that may be powerful, but have very long reload times. And that is it for the mutations. There are character-specific ultra mutations, but we'll cover those in another video. Again, all mutations really come down to player choice, character choice, and situation. For me personally, I tend to prioritize Strong Spirit, Bolt Marrow, Rabbit Paw, Impact Wrists, and Bloodlust across the board. But again, that's just me. It's up to you to find which mutations work for you, which don't, and which ones will become your absolute priority. 
For now, play around with mutations. See which you like best, which you want to avoid, and more importantly, start figuring out which mutations go best together. For example, Plutonium Hunger and Rabbit Paw make for a lot more pickups drawn to you a lot further away. See what you can find, and work to get that ultimate build that will carry you all the way to the throne and beyond. So, until next time, as always, stay throny, my friends. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate liking and subscribing so you can see more video game content such as Game Boy Roulette, a brief look at, and of course the Nuclear Throne tutorial series. And feel free to check me out on Twitch for streams multiple times a week, often with Nuclear Throne runs. Thanks again, and I will see you all next episode.